Right then, today I'm going to need the use of the laptop because we are going to be having a think about how to turn your digital images, uh, which you know, you're using normal digital uh, everyday sensors, how to turn those images into images that look like they come from this kind of analog camera. It's one of those kind of, I guess it's one of those weird things about modern photography in that we're spending a lot of our time using digital modern day sensors, but looking to make our images look like they were taken from a bygone era. There's still something about film which we just love. There's something authentic, there's something that's full of texture that's got kind of an atmosphere to it, which in my opinion gets a bit lost in digital photography. The more kind of higher res we go, the sharper we go, the more HD looking, the more, you know, kind of hyper real we end up going, I think we're as we journey on that way, we're going to lose and we are losing some of that atmosphere in photos. And so people like me have spent money buying older digital cameras like the Fujifilm X-E1, the Fujifilm X-E2, looking for those early Fujifilm sensors because they're a bit more filmic and because, you know, they lose some of that sharpness. They kind of add some of that texture, a bit more grain, you know, that kind of atmosphere and storytelling kind of feeling in a photo. And so over the last few years, I've been shooting with various types of analog cameras. I've been shooting with a Bronica 6x6, which produces beautiful medium format photos using uh, some of my favorite films like Kodak Ektar 100 or uh, Portra 100. Um, there are just so many beautiful types of um, films out there which I've been using to shoot landscapes because I love the texture and the feeling and um, yeah so and I put some of those things those photos in my um, my most recent book because again I like that look that looks more like a, a painting in the landscape it's a beautiful um, way of taking a photo so but if you don't want to go out and buy a film camera and have to get the film developed etc etc and spend that money and that time on that process but you want to achieve that look in your digital camera well I've got three simple steps I'm going to show you now about how you turn your digital images into an analog looking um, photo without buying any presets you know when people set, sell you presets they're basically doing what I'm doing to show you now and they're personalizing them and you know and getting them ready for you to buy which is great but you can do it yourself and you can make endless um, amounts of them which is the wonderful thing now there are three things we're going to do and these are three things I'm going to quickly outline and then I'm going to show you what you do when you look at a old analog image the reason it's different is this the film handles the colors differently to a modern day digital sensor. It will handle the blacks and the whites differently. Now every film will actually be different depending on what you do with it. So if you shoot, if you overexpose or underexpose a film, you're gonna make it look different. Um, the way that you develop it will make it look different. So film is kind of very changeable anyway. The amounts of grain is very changeable, depending on what type of film you're buying. Some film have some films have very large grain and really really grainy. Others are very fine grain. Um, some films like the Kodak Ektar 100 will say it's one of the most has one of the most finest grains you can buy. So it really depends on the style and the look that you're looking for. Uh, but you can recreate that in Adobe Lightroom. You want to do some three different things. Firstly, you want to think about the colors. You want to think about where the black point is, where the white point is. You see, with film, it will basically change your your blacks to kind of more like grays, and your whites will be less white and more like grays. It kind of begins to blend that those um those color palettes together, which begin to give you that kind of very faded film look. So I'm going to show you these three steps now. So I'm just going to get the computer on. Okay, so. As I was saying, film renders color differently to um, digital photography. So you have to remember that when you when you come to think about creating your own analog preset. Okay, it renders color differently. It also 
um, changes, like I said, where the black and the white um, points are, they begin to shift. And also you've got the grain. So we're gonna look at these three different things. So you head straight over here to the um, develop module and you can, you know, do a little bit of tweaking if you want. I've got here a picture I took of a kind of a lone tree um, in Dorset the other day. So all you do, you begin to, before you even start to mess about in this area, just literally come down to this tone curve. Okay, and you want to start here on the left hand side and you just want to tweak the black point because you're going to find that um, film uh, handles the black point very differently. Digital sensors tend to be very real. They are black is black, white is white. Well in here I've got my raw file and from a Fuji X-T3. So I'm going to begin to just look, you can see immediately what it does to that black point. The contrast begins to leave. See black here is really contrasty. Here it begins to leave. And then the same here with the, um, the white point. What I would do first before you just come down here, I would put a little um, marker there somewhere down. And then when you begin there, you're gonna see it just lightly turns off that white point. Now you can immediately see here, you've got the beginnings of something that looks more filmic. And you can just adjust it to your heart's content until you've got it how you want it. So here, is the beginning just beginning to get that faded look isn't it it's really faded i like it already the next thing you go to your hsl which is your hue saturation and your luminance so you can start off by literally playing about with this dragging these sliders up and down you can see what it's doing if this yellows the greens here look beginning to lose that here look a bit more saturated then i'll take out some of the on the hue there of the green and you're gonna find, just keep playing about, messing about with each slider. Look, there's the blues there. You can really go for it, really go a bit less. You, you literally are making up your own film. It's like a Fuji film simulation, but you're creating your own version of it. And because there are endless amounts of um, adjustments here, of combinations, you can create any look you want. And then that's, this is the great thing about it, is that you don't have to rely on the Fuji film simulations. Um, if you've got, if you shoot with Fuji Film, if you shoot with another camera, you know, and it, maybe you shoot with like a, I don't know, a Canon or something, and you're thinking, you know, I wish my shots looked a bit more like a Fuji Film. Well, you can do that. You can start to literally create something a bit more filmic. You know, I'm literally, and sometimes you'll find there are colours in the colours that you don't realise. So I always play about with all of them. And now they've got the luminance here. And again, I'm just literally going through. You can see here, this area here, you can see actually that orange is affected by that. So you're just literally playing around until you find something you like. And you can go back over it again until, until you get it how you want it and get it looking, you know, in the way you want. It may be that actually you want to bring this down a bit more to here on this tone curve and then just slightly change that look. And you're really going to blow out those skies a bit more. I mean, you know, it's quite an, I think it's quite a nice look anyway. Like, I quite like this. And you can spend, like I said, you can spend hours on this because it's one of those things that, um, there you go, put the brightness up a little bit. It's one of those things which, you know, you can forever come back to and you see it a bit differently each time. So you've got your hue, your saturation and your luminance. And then lastly, you would go in and you'd find, go right down to the bottom and find your grain. Now, every film has different types of grain. So the best way to do it is to just click in here, come to a portion of the picture um, that you can see close up and then begin to put your grain in and start off by going up to, you can see it and you can see here the grain and the size. You've got big, lots of large grain, smaller grain and how rough you want it. You know, you can just go for something that just takes your fancy at the time. You see, and now you've got a, a beginning of a preset there, which, you know, looks a bit more like an analog um, photograph, you know, and you can just keep changing these to, to, to suit your, your needs. So if I was to reset this picture now, that's how it started out. Really like quite harsh light. It's taken in the daytime. The sun's very bright. You've got this shadow, you know, and it, it looked quite cool as a black and white image um, the other day than I put it on Instagram. But actually, if I take it back to how he just changed it, you know, it's beginning to kind of get a bit more of a filmic look. And I might now say, right, let's actually increase my vibrance. Let's increase my um, saturation. Let's just bring the black point 
slightly down a bit more contrast in it you see and you're just beginning to put a bit more texture in you can you know it, it's just really fun because you can just absolutely create your own image and you might even then say you know what i want to make this a square image and i'm going to put it like that you know and then there you've got yourself a square a square image which looks like a six by six film image you know it's brilliant i so such a brilliant fun thing to do i really enjoy it and very easy to do just remember that film renders colors differently okay it completely processes the processes them in a different way depending on your exposure depending on the um the way it's developed film handles your black point and your white point differently and film has grain in if you can remember those three things and go down play with your hsl the hue saturation your luminance and work on your grain to get these right you will create some most wonderful images um literally using these simple tools that are given to you and this will save you having to go out and buy you know a film camera and spend all that money on film getting it developed etc you know this basically saves you from doing that and gives you your own your own look so that's my quick tip for um today you know if you love film photography if you love if you're a fuji shooter and you love the fuji film simulations or if you just love looking at old analog um, photographs and you want to recreate your own this is a great way to get started you know um you can just go through this you can just keep changing it you can keep working on it you know and for every photo that you take you could create your own set of presets um but once you've kind of got your um your look here you can go into uh, the de uh, develop and you click on um, develop new preset and create your preset it saves it in your user um, area and then you've got that preset forever and you can just keep making new ones depending on um, what kind of film you want to kind of uh, emulate or even just create your own series of presets so hope that's helpful um, have a lot of fun doing that and uh, yeah i'll see you in my next film cheers